Hi there guys, how's it going? Uh, so I'm sure like many of you, uh, I've just watched the E3 2018 Xbox conference and to our surprise, there was a Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer contained within it, a trailer which had some pretty cool new information in it. So I've been able to pretty much not stop watching it since it came out and I just thought I'd share with you guys a little mini breakdown I've, I've done of it uh, as I've been watching through it, just some little things I've been picking up over the many, many times I kept re-watching it. So I thought, you know what, maybe I'll share that with you guys and maybe you can get something out of it as well. I'm really, really hyped. I'm sure I'm going to miss plenty more stuff as well. So if there's anything else you guys want to share with me, please leave it in the comments. But until then, let's get into it. So about three or, three or so minute trailer. Let's have a little look what we can find inside. I'll keep the volume on. Um, I'll try not to talk over it too much, but I'm sure I'll, like, I'll leave the link in the description for you guys to watch it when you do feel like it. The first thing I saw, oops, I already missed it again. Uh, you have to be really, really quick. There it is. Okay. If you take a little peek there, you can actually see the little Olaf uh, keychain sitting on there. So obviously it's a pretty decent look at the Keyblade from the Frozen Realm. It looks like the, the, the Frozen Over Castle, the Arendelle Castle. I don't know what it's called, but the castle in Arendelle where the, uh, a lot of the movie takes place. Look, the Frozen Over, so it looks pretty sweet. Um, in a little while, we'll be able to it's see the cool. command star associated with that. I really like hey, the voice sync like here. The voice sync is incredible, like, compared to the past games in the series, Look, and even, even compared to, like, a lot of other Square Enix games nice. before, that at least I've personally wow. seen. I am so impressed with this voice sync. Um, we'll be able to see a little bit more of that in a second, but... Um, nothing really too much to talk about. Well, obviously, the fact that Frozen is now being finally confirmed. Uh, after oh, months, if not years, of speculation. You really are alive. I love the voice Hello. acting here as well. And just the oh, character models look nope. be more no, than no, ever pulled no, no, directly no, no, out of the films. It's incredible. Like, I think a lot of people were a, a bit concerned about him. Oh, look at that. That's a great place to pause it. Um, a lot of people, myself included, were a bit concerned about the character models when they first started appearing, especially in like 0 0.2. The first trailer for, for 0 0.2 had me a little bit worried, but... Seeing him now in all that glory, it's like, wow, just, just so beautiful. Let's pull back a bit. I mean, these guys right here, look at like freaking the eyes on, is it Sven? I forget the guy's name. I've, I must admit, I haven't seen Frozen in a few years. Um, but both of them just look absolutely magnificent. Um, his voice acting was incredible. The way that, you know, the lip sync with the snowman, absolutely, I'm, you know, I'm definitely fanboying out here. Obviously, we have a new command style, Blizzard Blades. I'm pretty sure you can associate it with that that particular keyboard that we saw before. Yeah. Like, like reverse claws yeah. at the back of his hands to shoot off. It's like not even a keyblade anymore, but whatever. It still looks pretty sweet, and I can't wait to try it out. Obviously, a Simba summon here with the King's Flare. Uh, I don't know if the, I don't know if you still call it a command style when it's a summon, but in any case, it looks beautiful again. Like. You know, all the dark lighting sh illuminated by this bright, bright attack launched by Simbo. Just fantastic stuff. Uh, we see another, it looks to be another attraction flow. Um, similar to like that, the, I forget its name now, the train one that we've seen in Olympus a few times. Um, obviously, you can see that there are Sully and Mike are party members down the bottom right. That, well, actually, no, you can't see that. Because uh, my big dumb face is locked, uh, kept it locked away. But <laughs> we've got everyone looking real angry. So that must mean they're in the thick of it, in the thick of the combat down the bottom there. We'll keep playing it a bit more, so we can see this splash run command style. Wreck It Ralph here, looking a little bit different than I'm pretty sure when we've seen him in the past. We haven't seen that really like it's like he's been pulled directly out of a CRT television. It's not. It's probably easier to see if you guys pull it up on your own uh, video, but you can see he's like literally composed of a bunch of squares here. It's, it looks really, really interesting. Like you can see there's a clear difference because I've just paused it on the screen. Show you. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there are a bunch of different like little squares all over the, the character model of Wreck-It Ralph. And it like he's, he's, looks like he's pulled, like I said, directly off a CRT television. It's really, really, really good attention to detail that I don't think we've seen in previous trailers. And well, obviously I wasn't at the gameplay reveal, but I don't believe that was shown there as well. Really cool little character interaction. So it's not like you're like locked in place when that's happening, because you see Sora did sort of take a, a step forward, presumably controlled by the, the controlling character, controlling player. Whoa. Some terrain traversal there with uh, Rapunzel. Really nice. Looks like we have a little on-rail shooter type thing. That reminds me of the, uh, one of the finishes of like, um, of RE Coded. You know when they're in Wonderland and RE Coded and you have to like run down a little laneway fighting like a trick master? That's kind of what this is reminding me of. Um, and also some of the finishes of Kingdom Hearts 3D. But we only see that for, you know, a couple of seconds before it goes away. 
uh, the command style that we've seen a few times before, Twin Yo-Yos, is, I don't know if we knew the name of it before, but we definitely do now. And we see that finishing move, which looks really, really sweet. I believe that's a shot lock. And of course, how could we forget, the gummy ship makes his triumphant return. So a lot of people are speculating, how is Sora going to get from world to world in this game? Is he going to go via Keyblade armor? Is he going to go via gummy ship? And even though we do see them taking off in the gummy ship at the end of 0.2, it could have been cutscene only, we didn't necessarily know, but I mean, I guess this is as good as a confirmation as any. The Gummy Ship is making his triumphant return. I mean, it's a true numbered Kingdom Hearts title, obviously, so there it is. Uh, and the trailer definitely shifts tone quite dramatically here. Obviously, the Don't Think Twice uh, uh, theme song of Kingdom Hearts 3 is now playing in the background, and we do get quite a heavy dose of story, uh, story content, so... I, I almost don't want to know... Like, I just want to, like close my eyes and ignore all this so I can actually get to experience it when the game comes out, but I suppose we're way past that point now. <laughs> like, three or four trailers safe at this point. Again, I really want to highlight just the lip sync here, I think looks absolutely stunning. Um, we'll skip through this though. Obviously she's, you know, it's taking place during the Frozen movie, so she's conflicted about her powers having this big resurgence and she's trying to flee from Arendelle Castle to protect her sister and all the rest of the residents, obviously a bit too late there because she's unknowingly, if I remember the movie correctly, frozen the entire place over, which prompts the sister to go look for her in the first place, which I guess is when the sister Anna will run Anna will run across Sora and friends. Um, take a look here though. Herc looks, see he still looks a little bit plasticky to me, but I guess that's the trade-off when you go from the, tr the traditional cartoon animation style into the modern day you know, Kingdom Shader, so he does look not quite as good as some of these other models, which I guess is fair enough because these, you know, Elsa and Anna literally are taken from a 3D animation movie, which I guess means the translation to a 3D animated game makes a lot more sense than again, the, uh, tra <clears throat> then again, characters that were initially 2D animation. It's a lot smoother transition is what I'm trying to say. But I still think he looks quite good. You know, the little NPCs that we see down the bottom here in a second look really good because obviously, you know, you can make them... You don't have to go, like, directly from the source material. You can sort of have a couple of liberties with them. Um, really interesting, though, is that Sora is still... Sorry, I've replied this, like, 30 times here. But all the guys are still in their Kingdom Hearts 2 outfits, which... I mean, if we, we knew this already, given off of 0.2, but... Literally, the end of 0.2 happens. They hop in the gummy ship. They probably take off, I guess... I guess our first interaction with Kingdom Hearts 3 will be a gummy ship section as we fly to Hercules' world, you know, to Olympus. Um, and obviously we're going to land, literally probably dive down as we've seen in the trailers, the previous trailers a bunch of times. Land here, I guess the place is going to be under attack from where the Hades is launching some sort of assault and that's why he's got the uh, the, the rock titan on his side to cause havoc. You know, Hercules, like the, the, the Colosseum is crumbling around him so Hercules is trying to defend the citizens, whatever. And we're trying to seek his help. Like, I love the idea of us jumping in. Sort of like, um, I don't know, like Mass Effect 3 style. How perhaps Xehanort is like getting all the Disney villains to kick off trouble in the respective Disney worlds. And we're just sort of like jumping into those various points. And either, I suppose, helping out with those conflicts. If, if they feature re recurring villains that we've seen before. Or in the case of Frozen, I guess... Frozen will be a more traditional Kingdom Hearts world, like where we sort of take the place of a main character in the story or sort of insert ourselves in the main story. But like in a world we've been to many, many times before, like Olympus, for example, it's like we're getting like right in the thick of it. I'm, I'm assuming Hades is causing trouble and, you know, we're here to help basically, which is great. I don't know. I, I Something about this really, really excites me, the idea that we're jumping in. There's a full story happening around us. It doesn't just begin and end when Sora gets there and then, you know, nothing happens outside of that. It's, it seems to be already kicking off, which I, I don't know, that really excites me to be, for the Disney, Disney stories to have relevance again, which I don't know. I like that a lot. And we'll keep going. Obviously we cut off to the Toy Story now. I, we only hear, okay, I'll, I'll play it again. We only hear like two instances of, uh, Ham, what's his name? <laughs> we barely hear it, but, if if John Ratzenberger, Ratzenberger, Rastenberger, I, I really don't know how to don't know how to say his name, but if he's able to make an appearance in this game, like if they can get all the original voice cast, especially for the Toy Story world, whew, I mean you know you know James Woods is going to be playing Hercules, uh, Hercules Hades again because he always does, but if they can get all the Disney talent back for all the various roles, it's going to be so fantastic. 
Uh, so basically a tiny little bit of uh, Toy Story footage there, and now we're straight into Monster Sneak. I guess because the bloody boost following you. I didn't even see that the first few times. Uh, and Unversed. I know. I think we've seen it a few times before, but if I needed, if you needed a reminder, Unversed looked to be the main villains or the main enemy type of uh, of the Monsters Inc. world, which is really interesting. Like, so you wonder if the thirteen darknesses are going to be attacking each world individually, and some characters will be using like Heartless to do so. Some will be using Nobodies and. Presumably, if Vanitas is here, he's going to be using the Unverse that we know so very well. So, a Sora vs. Vanitas boss fight is hopefully on the cards, because I think that'll be really, really freaking cool. Uh, hopefully some shenanigans that happen there, but um, yeah. We only see like two brand new Unverse here, which are obviously very, very Monsters Inc. inspired. I love how they take inspiration from each of the different movies and then create these enemies based on them. Like we saw the deer much earlier on, which is obviously like, you know, you take the... Oh God, I, I said I've, I've seen Frozen like 0.8 times, so I can't remember the name of the deer. I'm, I apologize, Frozen fans, but you know, you take the name, of, you take the deer, and you create a heartless version of that, and you take the really interesting designs of the monsters from Monsters Inc., and you, you know, make them even more evil, if <laughs> so to speak. I don't know. I love it. I love it. I'm really, really, really happy. Just the level of detail on Rapunzel's hair here is just incredible. Like. It's obviously not just the 2D sprites that we're used to. Obviously, a full 3D model wrapped around this beautiful hair. And obviously, she's going to be able to use that as a weapon later on. This is obviously just a, a story cutscene. Um, a few NPCs in the background, which makes me really, really hopeful. Like, you only see them for just half a second there. But I'm hoping for interactions with NPCs a lot like... I don't know, a lot like, you know, Final Fantasy XV style. We, there are other people in the world. <laughs> as opposed to, you know, you go through... It. The example cited a million times, but you go to Olympus Coliseum in Kingdom Hearts 1 and Kingdom Hearts 2, well, especially Kingdom Hearts 1, and you hear the crowd cheering for you and you look in the stands and there's no one there. These big, open, enormous worlds which are meant to be, you know, bustling with activity and there's, not, there's just no one there. So I'm ex extremely excited to make these feel worlds feel fully fleshed out and real and inhabited. And if I'm stuttering, I'm really sorry. It is currently 6.30 a.m. I did stay up quite late to watch it. Because uh, given that the conference started 4 a.m. Australia, well, 4 a.m. my time, so forgive me for being a little bit out of it, guys. But uh, it was definitely worth staying up. Again, another beautiful model. I've only seen this movie same like once or twice ish. Um, but again, just Rapunzel looks, I mean, beautiful. Pulled directly from the film again. I don't think that needs to be stated anymore that they've clearly worked extremely hard on recreating these models just expertly, absolutely expertly. You know. The amount of detail in that hair, for example, and just each individual little flower. I, again, I'm a fanboying over it way too much. It looks Roxas like a scene from the film. Exist. His heart's inside my heart. And again, the other oh God, how much better does this, does this scene look than when we first saw it? I might even pause here. So I've just pulled the two of them up together there, and you can just see the difference, like the amount of extra time and detail that's gone into Sora's character model, as well as all the rest of them as well, but... Particularly just the color highlights and the way the lighting just sits much more naturally on Sora's face in the new trailer compared to the old one. You know, in the old one, he looks quite pale and rubbery and not certainly not real. And I think that's what got a lot of people going, yeah, a little bit iffy on the Kingdom Shader. But uh, the proof is in the pudding. Obviously, the time they've taken really, really has paid off. I think it looks stunning now, just beyond, beyond stunning. Obviously, Sora, uh, sorry, Goofy and Donald don't look too different from the previous forms. I would say the lighting does look a bit better as well. Obviously, they've had a lot more time to work on that engine. You can see, like Goofy's left leg, for example, it's much more evenly distributed across the entire thing rather than they're like, they're kind of quite harsh, a little like harsh patch on his inner left leg, for example. But I don't know, I just think it looks just absolutely wonderful. Let's get back to the rest of the trailer. Rocks Let's go over the scene again exist. now. So obviously we know Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to feature the big battle between the seven weirdos of light versus the 13 seekers of darkness. Presumably the characters are going to discuss, okay, well, which of the, th which of the seven are they going to be? You know, they could probably make a list and then go, well, what about Roxas? He could be potentially one of the seven. And then the question, of course, then becomes, well, how do we get him back? How do we make him on our side? So presumably they've gone to Twilight Town thinking maybe there's some sort of clue on how to bring him back there. Obviously we've seen this scene multiple times in many different trailers. Uh, but I mean, just look at the character model now. Look at that chin on Xemnas. It's absolutely <laughs> stunning. Oh, God. It just looks better and better every time I see it. I don't even, I almost don't want to keep looking at this just because I don't want to spoil it for when I, we, we finally do get to play it. But 
Man, I can't wait to see how much it changes in the next six months. The other Twilight Man. Town is just data. Interesting. So it seems like they want to go to the Twilight Town composed solely of data and look for Roxas there somehow. Or is it going to be some sort of nonsense? Well, I mean, I suppose they've got the data inside Sora that Ansem the Wise stored there. So maybe that's going to tie in somehow. There'll be a big clue on how to bring Roxas back. If they have to go into the data world and they're going to think, what about the data version of Roxas? Is, is he in there? I don't know. It's interesting. I can't wait to find out what happens. Can't wait. So what will Elsa accept? And then, Light. who else? But Larkseen is back. We weren't too sure if that was going to happen. Some On Twitter, some voice actors maybe spilled that Larkseen would be returning. But here's, in the flesh, the full confirmation. I really can't. I'm so glad to have a few more female Kingdom Hearts characters back in. Especially like one of the, what, five, six original Kingdom Hearts characters that there are. Not counting how many clones of Kari there are. <laughs> oh no, it's awesome, 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 awesome. And obviously, it's this like really reminds me of the Beauty and the Beast scene from Kingdom Hearts 2, where obviously Zoldan was sent basically to convert. Well, in that game, they wanted to form really strong Heartless, right? So what is the plot of this one? Do they want more Seekers of Darkness? Like, why, why would the organization set the sights on Elsa? Apart from the fact that she's obviously a very, very powerful, uh, you know, ice wielder, and given that... Well, given that I guess Vexen's probably not going to be around. Well, actually, Vexen might be back. Maybe they want another ice wielder that they can manipulate a bit more easy. Or maybe they want more Seekers of Darkness. I don't know. Or maybe just more people to cause trouble for Sora and the gang. Uh, but anyway, it seems they have their sights set on Elsa and trying to turn her over to the darkness, which darkness. Sora I does I not know. seem to like. Well, good for you, but guess what? I won't let her fall to darkness. Well... What let her fall to darkness, huh? And then the very next scene. This is just nasty. The very next scene. See, Riku's kneeling... Uh, before we get to this beautiful new keyblade. Riku's kneeling over there. Like, um... Clenched by his side. As if he's taking damage in the battle. So, again, I assume probably in a cutscene, maybe we're gonna, like, come up to this Dark Meridian, fight a few Heartless, and then... From somewhere, will be... You know, Riku will be attacked, and he's gonna hurt his arm, and Mickey will be captured in a giant dark ball and then from the shadows will emerge this figure who picks up this beautiful hybrid between star seeker and the kingdom key which i can only assume is mickey's new replacement blade or new blade for kingdom hearts 3. look at this thing like little indentations on the crest here absolutely beautiful this like sphere of stars beautiful and like it's like almost like the wizard's hat that he used to wear in fantasia Going up the uh, up the shaft, is that what you call it? I'm not sure what you call that, but... It's just the design on this is absolutely beautiful. Uh, how many times have I said that? It's a little, a, a very much a hybrid of the Kingdom Key and the Star Seeker, which makes me think it's definitely going to be Mickey's replacement blade uh, for Kingdom Hearts 3. As well as the fact that it's got the Mickey head emblazoned on it. Doesn't necessarily mean it's Mickey's just because of that, but given that he did wield the Kingdom Key D in all the past games... Oh, beautiful. I wonder if Sora's going to get like a, a Kingdom Key original version of this key where... Well, actually, that's kind of what this is now right now because it's like a, got a golden hilt and a silver crown. But I wonder if there'd be like a reverse version of this with the silver on the top and gold on the crown. Either way, it looks stunning and I can't wait to figure out the story behind it. But who should pick it up, of course. But old pointy shoes herself. This keyboard. Like a female figure. And if you couldn't is figure that? it out by now... Couldn't pick it up from the voice. Mickey. Oh dear. Ark, what have they done to you? So she's wearing dark clothing. So not only has the darkness corrupted her hair, but you can see like her straps, which are previously pink, on top of the blue outfit. And now completely dark. It looks fantastic, but... Too late. God. Just the character model looks better and better every single time I see it, and this is no exception. Absolutely stunning absolutely stunning and of course the implication being here that well mickey maybe you should have done something about trying to find aqua instead of waiting around for 10 years and then going oh wait we need more keyblade wielders now i guess is the person trapped in the darkness that's been there for 10 years i guess i could have maybe thought about her whoops sorry yeah horrible stuff but are we going to be able to turn her back? Is she gone forever? Does the yellow eyes and white hair very clearly implies a possession by Xehanort. We saw that Xehanort, you know, found a way to get to her 
through her through her connection with Tara, Zayna was able to basically take control of her. Well, not take literally control of her, but you know, do the whole grab thing that he does at one point. So uh, during zero point two, so potentially over the extremely long period of time that she's trapped there, where theoretically she's only getting weaker and Xehanort being someone who does quite like the darkness a fair bit will only get stronger eventually he just gets control and perhaps to the point where she gives in and is possessed by him it's what a twist huh <laughs> what a twist so will she be a boss fight will she ever be a playable character again who knows but I am extremely excited guys again sorry for the like rambling nonsense that I'm going on about here if there's any more things that you saw in the trailer that you want to point out to me please let me know uh, I'm probably going to rewatch this a couple more times tomorrow and yeah looking forward to the rest of E3 we do have the Square Enix conference uh, I believe it's about 28 or 48 hours from now I want to say 48 I want to say it's not not quite yet but hopefully we'll get some more Kingdom Hearts 3 news out of that potentially potentially we won't though because we got a pretty nice trailer here um, but maybe Final Fantasy 7 remake news in the Square Enix trailer uh, Square Enix conference who knows but given that they have their own full conference keeping my fingers crossed you can be damn sure of that uh, big news on Kingdom Hearts Union Cross I'll cover that one I've had some sleep but in the meantime guys I'm so excited I hope you guys are as well all the best I'll catch you later bye